Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bridgeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. We're actually, there were 20 of us in Westboro. Uh, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations, which I do a lot, I always talk about Frank and Mary and their goal in life, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And so if you identify with that, then, then this show is for you. Because the point of this show is to help you find out the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about in order to do exactly that. Just stay here in Westboro, happy happy ever after, happy ever after. So my colleague, uh, uh, Shelby Marshall, um, she's the well-known one part of the team, the well select men and blah, 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 um, is my co-host and she always finds these great guests. And, and But she's invited back uh, a guest that we had before, and her ratings were so high that we decided to invite her back for another show. Who do we have today, Shelby? Yeah, good morning, Arthur. Always uh, great to see you. I'm so excited that Kara Presley, our Director of uh, um, Youth and Family Services, is back with us today. Welcome back, Kara. Thank you. It's so nice to be here again. Arthur, I don't know if um, it's the ratings or we just, we've been on so long that now, you know, we're bringing back, you know, favorites. Yeah, we're bringing, this yes, is great. Yes, it's like the, re, you know, as opposed to doing reruns, we were going to do a rerun with you, Kara, because your ratings were so high, but we decided we'd have you live, right? Even better, even better. And it's, you know, so, and we really appreciate your coming on, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, spring's coming, COVID's going, we just feel like life's getting better, you know? It is. It is. It's Although um, I know that uh, from Kara's uh, updates to our town manager, Youth and Family Services has been extremely busy. Um, Kara and I work together as well in the Diversity Inclusion Committee. We've got, you know, that, that committee's work is really ramping up and um, unfolding at, at a positive pace. And so anyway, Kara, this is really your time to give the community an update. We'll ask some questions along the way, but what do you have for us? Sure. Well, I'm so glad to be here. And I was trying to remember exactly the date when I first came, and, and I don't recall exactly, but it was last spring, um, probably just under a year ago, at which time the pandemic was new. We were all kind of newly shocked by what was happening. And, and I know I talked a lot at that time about the emotional toll that the pandemic was taking, and, and it was a, really a message of of self-care and preservation. And, and I would have never anticipated that I'd be here with a very similar message today. Um, I'm with you, Arthur, with vaccines um, in play and summer, you know, in the foreseeable future and the sunshine happening with spring. I mean, there is definitely a sense of hope and I am clinging to that and I am spreading that for sure. And I also want to acknowledge that times are still a little tough. Things are still a little weird. Um, we're not totally out of the woods yet. And I, and with that, I say it not to be a doomsdayer, but to just to say, hey, if you're still having a hard time, we're with you. Like, I would be really surprised to hear if anyone is not still having those moments or those days or even those weeks where they're like, this is really tough. So I just want to say that that is normal. And um, that's, we're still going to support people. Um, as the pandemic continues and the emotional stress of it um, kind of continues to take a toll. So I just kind of want to open with that. And I think it's a good point. And you got to still be careful. I know one of my, yeah. I have, we have a wonderful person who works with me and does a lot of the, the marketing and stuff that I do, who was down with COVID last week. I mean, like badly down with it, you know, when was having breathing problems and a little heart problem, a lot of, you know, and she said she had gone to see her daughter she thought the daughter was okay because the daughter was really being safe, but then the daughter got it too, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's still around. And you, so you just, you know, you, I keep telling clients, you know, we're very close here. Just be careful. You don't want to be the one that they're saying last, you know, next Christmas, oh, too bad about auntie, you know? She, she died, you know, right at the end, you know? <laughs> That'd be terrible, right? Exactly. It's really hard, yeah. Exactly. You know so we kind of got to hang on and keep supporting each other to keep going. Yeah. Kara, what are, as you know, as we sort of are in this hopeful space, um, um, but yet um, always the role of youth and family services to support those who are in need in many ways. Um, what are some of the things that you and your team department are focusing on? And I know you work collaboratively with many others. Sure. Well, one of the things I'm most excited to share about, and I think that this will be 
really concretely relevant to many of your viewers is um, a new program that we have started that we are calling Reach Out Westboro. This is a program that is funded thanks to a recently awarded grant from the Metro West Health Foundation. And the grant was awarded to programs like ours to work to build emotional resiliency in the face of COVID-19. So we have developed a program where we are um, creating short, simple virtual trainings for people in the Westboro community to teach folks about the signs and symptoms of mental health distress and what to do about it. That is the very short in a nutshell version of what we're doing, but we're specifically targeting people who according to research and data have been shown to be at particular risk of negative mental health impacts because of the pandemic. Um, those folks are, include unpaid caregivers. It includes um, young adults. It includes essential workers. And it includes um, members of our Black and Indigenous and people of color communities, particularly those who are Black and Hispanic. And so we are designing these short trainings. We're contracting with mental health professionals to bring on, um, to provide these short trainings for free to members of the community. So I wanna tell you about that now because a lot of the folks um, watching this show may fall into one of those categories. I'm particularly thinking about unpaid caregivers. And in fact, that is the group we're focusing on right away. So we are just now starting to recruit people to attend our trainings. Um, I will uh, we'll be sharing as part of this show, you'll get information about how to sign up for more information about this. But these are trainings for adult caregivers of elderly parents or family members. These are trainings for adults who are caring for partners or spouses or kids with chronic illness or special needs or who are differently abled. Um, these are for volunteer caregivers. No one has to be have to, has to have had experience with mental health problems. No one has to have experience now with mental health distress. This is for people who are interested in understanding how this pandemic is taking a toll on our mental health. Understanding it so you can recognize in yourself when the distress you're feeling might be beyond the day-to-day -day stress that a lot of us have. It, to recognize in your neighbors, in your loved ones, and to be able to know, what do I do about it? If I see that someone's really struggling, what do I do? What are some of the strategies we can do to keep ourselves and each other safer and healthier? And where can we go to access health or help? Um, so these trainings are going to be offered via Zoom or a similar online platform. Um, they are going to be less than two hours long, completely free. And we're gonna make sure that everybody can have access no matter your situation. So we are prepared to help people get access to smart devices so that they can access the technology. We're, ex we're prepared to help them to access that technology. We're prepared to provide language interpretation and or translation as needed to help folks for whom English is not your first language. Um, and this is not a support group, it's a training. It's going to be small. They're gonna be less than 20 people in each training. Um, a mental health professional from a reputable organization will be providing these trainings. And in the case of the trainings for unpaid caregivers, we are happy to be working with our friends at Open Sky, which some people know as the bridge um, out of Worcester. And they're gonna be facilitating the training. And um, those of us at Youth and Family Services with our partners at Westboro Connects are gonna be working with each and every individual person who wants to um, participate to give you information and get you set up. And it should be a very easy process. Kara, one of the things you hit on it a you know a couple minutes ago, and I think it's so important for Frank and Mary and their friends to understand, is that I think when you're um, a caregiver of, of any type, but the, the, um, you know caring for an aging spouse or um, an otherwise able adult child, is that your norm you become so accustomed to your norm, and that norm is often, I mean, if anyone else were to sort of step into those shoes, you know, it would be, <laughs> it would be overwhelming in a matter of, you know, certainly days, maybe hours. And so I think you, you make a great point that, um, you know, and I would encourage Frank and Mary that 
re regardless of whether you think you're, you know, stressed or in distress or whatever the right clinical term is, go to the training, right? Um, it's an opportunity maybe to just listen and maybe an opportunity to share based on, you know, whatever you're inclined to do during that training. But um, it, it's the type of thing I think so many unpaid caregivers do not avail themselves of because they're caregiving. Right, so this is free. You guys are gonna make sure language is not an issue, right? And my understanding is there's interpretation services um, that will be available if closed caption is needed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, um, you know, I just I encourage folks to, you know, you can't be a caregiver if you yourself are depleted. And we hear that all the time. And, and like, and, and, as, and as Shelby says, cause she, both Shelby and I both, we work with a lot of folks who are caregivers, you know, yes. and so we see it, right? And and even if, even if you were okay, like before the pandemic, I think that's the reason for the grant from Metro West Health Foundation, is that this this year has produced these unique stresses. So people that we thought were stressed before, and at least, but at least they could get out and they could see people and they could do, are now like. So, so I totally, as Shelby had said, you know, do this just to listen, just to listen. And then once you finish listening, go look at yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, Ooh, you know, am I really, you know, am I really stressed? And maybe there's some things that you could do because that's what they want to do. They just want to, you know, it's not like, am I crazy? You know, it's like, am I just in a point where some, you know, I could, I could really use having some people talk to me and help me, you know, that's all. Well, we need to, you know, we, we talk about it and, you know, this is like redundant because we hear it all the time, but I don't think we can say it enough. And that is we need to lift the stigma off of, you know, helping those with mental health. Right. So I, I think if anyone were to look in the mirror in the privacy of their own space, right. And be honest with themselves, we've all had those moments, right. I know I have, and and you're kind of like, you know, what do I do, right? And, and it always fascinates me, maybe that's the wrong word, but the difference between those that somehow find a way of coping in a healthy way and those who cannot, and those who slide to a space where recovery is so difficult and, and often tragic. And so, um, you know, this free training, if, you know, maybe, maybe this training doesn't resonate with you, but I bet Frank or Mary know a neighbor, right? Who would really benefit from it. So Kara, how, I know, I think we're gonna put up some information. Yes, Even yes. our friend behind the scenes is gonna post some information. So you can contact Youth and Family Services to sign up and it's as simple as that. Yes, yes. absolutely. There are two ways to inquire about it. Um, one is to contact our office, give us a call at 508-366-3090. But also there is a, um, website link on Westboro Connects website. Um, and we will soon post that on ours as well that you can sign up for more information. And once you sign up, we'll be in touch with you about the dates of the trainings and the specifics about how to connect. Um, the dates are not set in concrete yet, but they are likely to be in about a month. Um, and we are hoping to be able to accommodate as many people as sign up. We will be keeping the training small because we do recognize that this can be a sensitive topic. We don't want it to be too overwhelming. So we'll have less than 20 people in each training session. Um, and we're, we're hopeful that we'll be able to provide enough training sessions to anyone who is interested. And, and Arthur and Shelby, I almost feel like I don't need to be here because you just brought, you just drove home the points I wanted to make, which is that um, we want to destigmatize talking about mental health. Mental health does not mean crazy. Mental illness does not mean crazy. Mental health disorder does not mean crazy. It means that we have been pushed past the point where we can cope on our own. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. We're all set up differently. Our circumstances um, create variables in, that cause some of us to be more distressed than others. There's no shame in it. This is not a bad thing. You are not a, a not strong person if you're experiencing distress or if someone you love is. It means that you might just need a little boost to get you back to a point where you're less, um, where you're where you're able to cope easier. And you also highlighted something, Shelby, that I'm so glad you brought up, which is that sense of I'm not that bad off. Well, I'm not trying to say that you are that bad off. I'm not trying to judge your state of distress or not distress. But what I want to say is that you deserve 
to feel better. And the loved ones in your life deserve to feel better, no matter how it compares to anyone else's struggles. Your suffering is no more or less important than the next person's. And there's really no way to compare because we all have behind the scenes stories that nobody knows. There's no comparison. So I just wanna say that you deserve to have the information, you deserve access to the resources, you deserve to be able to feel empowered to help yourself and the people in your life to feel better. Well, in caregiving, you know, while it can be physically demanding, you know, you're physically taking care of someone, you're bathing them, you're helping them get dressed, you're shaving them, what have you. Um, it is emotionally draining and it is, um, and particularly, you know, Frank and Mary and friends are stuck in the house. They have been, it's the two of them constantly. It's like, you know, uh, you know, you know, I mean, it is, it's like, don't judge my state of crazy because I'm there. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but like I'm there. And, and so this, this training is so important. Kara, I do want to just say, I know this show is not about me. But I do want to, I think it's appropriate because um, uh, when I was in college and I was trying to figure out who I was um, and I realized that I didn't like boys anymore, I liked girls more, um, I was in a really bad, sad place. Um, I was in a bad, sad place by myself and, and with my parents and I'm an only child. And it got to a place where one day I said, you know, I mean, I never felt like I was going to harm myself, but I felt that I just, I didn't, you know, I was struggling and I was so lost. And I remember taking a candle, it was about the size of my mouse, because like, of course you burn candles in your dorm room, right? Because you're never supposed to do that. <laughs> this, is, this, this is what she used for the incense. This is what right. She used. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. And I remember throwing it at the door because I was so frustrated. And I took a deep breath and I said, this is not, you know, you're not coping here. You got to deal with this. So I called what was then, I think it was called psych services at, at school. And, um, and I made an appointment with a counselor there just to talk about how I was feeling. And that led to ultimately my parents attending one session with me, my mom, not my dad. He didn't feel comfortable doing that. And I respect that. Um, but I share this personal story because it was, for me, it was, you're okay, you're going to be okay, and here's how you can be okay, and other people around you may not be okay, it may take them a long time to get on that train, um, but um, you're going to be okay, and you have to take care of yourself, and so I carry that story with me to this day, and so when I talk with families that are struggling with aging parents, I mean, it's that same thing. So again, Eve, this training is not just for those who are, uh, and I want to make sure I'm correct, um, Kara, that it's not just for those that are day-to-day -day caregiving, but if you have an, you're an adult child and you're involved in taking care of mom and dad and you're here in Westboro or mom and dad are here in Westboro, um, this is an opportunity for you to you know, uh, take care of that because the better caregiver you are, the better life experience your, your um, loved one will have. So, I, always tell, I, always, I, always, I was going to say, I just always tell my clients, you know, the, my, old, my older clients who are taking care of their, their loved one, I say, you know, the worst thing you can do for your husband is drop dead, right? If, if because of your stress, you die, now your husband's in real trouble, right? So it's like you, 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 you help by helping yourself, you're also helping the person you're caring for, you know, a lot. You've got it. Right? And this training will be offered to other groups as well that I mentioned earlier, including young adults. Um, we are also highlighting the experiences of young adults, very much in line with the story you just shared about yourself, Shelby. Thank you for disclosing. Some young adults will be sharing in an event tonight that will be live broadcast on Westboro TV. It will also be recorded. So if it's not seen by folks tonight, you can see it anytime in the future. It's called In Their Own Voices. Some graduates of Westboro High School will be returning to do a virtual presentation, a panel presentation that I will be facilitating um, in conjunction with the Westboro schools and our Square One collaborators. Um, and they'll be sharing of their stories of mental health distress and help seeking. And it's really stories of resilience and perseverance. And it, it's people that were in your shoes, Shelby, in, in college or after high school. And it's people who will soon in their lives, not too far from now, 
the adults out in the world caring for people and doing things. And I think it's, even though it will be a young group, it will be relatable to everybody. So I really encourage people to tune into that as well. And that will be available on Westboro TV for those that uh, hear about it here, miss it, um, the live broadcast. Okay, great. Yes. Great. Indeed. So what else? Uh, just, uh, I'm going to be the timekeeper today, Arthur. Uh, but Kara, what else um, is going on at Youth and Family Services that you'd like to share with us? Sure. Well, if you haven't seen it, we are in collaboration with the Westboro Public Schools producing a regular um, for a publication that we're calling the Community Wellness Guide that focuses on destigmatizing issues of mental health and those conversations, as well as pursuing issues of anti-racism. And uh, we put out an edition in January and February that focused on um, pursuit of racial justice. And I really encourage people to look at that. We are, will be soon releasing one that's focused on mental health and transition and resilience. And in each episode or each edition, we focus, we share um, resources, local resources, people and places and services that people can access in Westboro. We also share articles, videos, books, information, inspirational quotes, podcasts, all, you, all kinds of different ways that people can access learning um, and, and get the information about these important topics. So I think that's one thing I wanna make sure that people are aware of. And if you're looking to access that, you can find it on our website. Um, and you can also find it on the wellness department's web website for the public schools. Kara, are, are you um, sharing that kind of link? Like I think about um, Alma at the Senior Center, she puts out a monthly uh, newsletter. Um, is that information that um, folks can find there at some point or have you considered that? Yes, and if they haven't already, I am starting to share that even more and more with the Senior Center. So absolutely, it's also shared out through our library and through our recreation department. And we often ask other departments to share it as well. So hopefully it's reaching a wide network, but if you know somebody or an organization who's not getting it, let me know and I'll make sure that they are on our, uh, our lists of people who get the distribution. Excellent, excellent. Kara, um, just uh, you touched on anti-racism a bit. Unfortunately, in yesterday's news, there was a horrific, shake my head, don't understand, incident in uh, New York City. And not only was the incident horrific, but the bystanders that appeared to be pretty big burly guys, uh, not only appeared to not uh, help, but they shut the doors after the scene was, so to speak, cleared. Um, what, <laughs> What thoughts can you, I know, I know the Youth and Family Services and the Diversity and Inclusion Committee put out a statement about uh, uh, anti-Asian uh, hate and, you know, uh, racism. What, what sort of, I guess, bring us back to Zen here for a moment. Sure. Well, um, on behalf of my department, Youth and Family Services and the Youth Commission that supports us, as well as in my role as the chairperson of the D Town's Diversity and Inclusion Committee, I want to reiterate that um, we as a town, because I have the support of the town managers and other town leaders with this, vehemently oppose bias-based violence of any kind. And we specifically want to stand up in support of our Asian community members who have been particularly targeted recently with escalating um, hate and violence um, aimed at them. And we want to work as tirelessly as possible to see um, that people in Westboro in particular feel safe, are safe, feel protected, and that we can uh, really build awareness and make sure that this stuff is not happening in the shadows um, with, with the whole goal of, of decreasing hate and harassment and violence in this community and hopefully even further beyond. Yeah, and I would say to folks out there, you know, I, when I saw that, I thought, God, back to like post 9-11 days, right? It was see something, say something, right? That's what, I mean, I think that that's sort of when that came out. But, you know, if, um, you know, you see something happening, you know, I, I fully understand some people aren't, you know, capable um, for any number of reasons of interfering. And I wouldn't advocate for that because everyone has to make that very personal decision. But do something and call 911. Um, stand up for someone because, uh, 
you know, you certainly would want that, want that to be the case if you were, you know, ever in harm's way, so. And I want to say that um, there are lots of ways that people can reach out for help, reach out to help others and learn more about these issues. And the statement that we made with between the Diversity and Inclusion Committee and the Youth and Family Services Department is available on the town's website and does include a list of resources to support the AAPI community to get help if you yourself or your loved ones are experiencing harassment or violence and to just learn more information. Um, so please do take a reference, take a look at that statement for that further information. Because that's a very local issue. Prejudice is a really, really, you know, you see it in these other places, but it happens in front of you. And it's like, we're all in this together. Prejudice towards somebody is prejudice toward everybody, you know? It, that's I think it's a wonderful yeah. message. That's a wonderful yes. message. Yeah. yeah. Great, great point, Arthur. I like that prejudice towards somebody is prejudice toward everybody. Very it is. Now, now what? Now Shelby told me that I'm not the timekeeper. But I'm going to remind Shelby at the end of the show. One of the purposes of the show is to keep folks, especially folks who are seniors and don't get a chance to get out, um, up on what's happening in town. So I just want to note that we have a few minutes, and Shelby, if you can just kind of talk to us about what's going on in Westboro and and, and what's upcoming, you know, in, sure. in, 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 at, that you think about as a select. Yeah, so one of the, um, actually next week on our show, we're gonna flip the schedule a little from our, our regular scheduled programming, so to speak. Um, and we'll have members of the Affordable Housing Trust on to talk about the COVID emergency uh, rent assistance or CIRA program uh, that the trust has recently approved. The trust working in coordination with the uh, community fund, which I've been very involved in and to fundraise. Uh, money to help those who are um, at risk with housing. Um, are, uh, so Sierra, the Sierra team will be on to talk about what that is. Um, they're launching a program um, using um, a um, vendor, if you will, to help with an application process to ultimately get money into the hands of rental assistance, into the hands of of uh, those who need it most here in Westboro. And so um, Alan and uh, Alan Edinburgh and Kate Storm will be on uh, next week to talk about that program. So it'll be, it'll be really interesting. And um, uh, I think I'll leave it at that at this point. Great. So, so Kara, I, you know, I think your, your ratings are gonna continue to be high. So I think we're, Shelby's probably gonna keep, just remind yourself, you know, to the, if you start wanting more money for these appearances, Shelby, Shelby's in charge of the purse strings, right? <laughs> So we, so we really, really appreciate it. You know, we really appreciate it. I think what you're talking about just is so relevant to a ton of different kinds of different kinds of folks in different situations right now, especially coming out of this horrendous year, right? So thank you so much for that. Shelby, as usual, thank you for coming up with these wonderful folks to really give folks who are, who are at home watching a sense of the wonderful community they live in, a sense of the wonderful and kind of connected community they live in. So this is really special. So. Folks, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and we hope we appreciate that. And once again, let you know, call Shelby if you've got any other thing, folks that you want to see on this show. She she's in control. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you. Thank you.